I'm, I'm pretty cool, guys. Listen, I know you, you see me sometimes. You're like, I don't think this guy's very cool. Trust me. Just trust me when I say I'm pretty cool. I know these things. Well, hello there. This is Jake, and I'm back with another video. And today's video is going to be my Doomtober walkthrough. I'm very excited. We've done great this year. I think we went through, we cranked everything out. I had a ton of people doing it with me. It was awesome. I love the prompts. I thought the prompts were super cool. And watercoloring everything was so much more strenuous, but so much more satisfying. Like, I feel I really improved from day one to day 31 in my watercolors. And that's all I could ask for. So that's awesome. Now, you may be asking yourself, hey, Jake, why are you wearing leather bracers, you weirdo? And to that I say, you're crazy. I've always worn these. Why are you just asking this question now? But the truth is, it's Halloween, man. It's Halloween, and I was a Viking for Halloween, and I'm going to go to work today dressed as a Viking, which is going to be pretty cool for me. Everyone else is probably going to think I'm weird. Whatever, I don't care. And also, I ain't going to lie, I got one of these button-up linen shirts, and it may be my new favorite shirt, and I might just start dressing like a weirdo Viking all the time because, well... It's comfy. Anyway, let's get started with the video. But before we do, as always, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, be sure to drop me a comment below. Let me know what you thought about the video. Let me know what your favorite Doomtober was this year. I painted the backgrounds black on the first two, and then I was like, I ain't doing this. It looks bad. <laughs> so I stopped. First prompt was grave. So I just thought, you know, obviously, a zombie bursting out of a grave. That's pretty cool. Troy had the exact same idea. Great minds. You know what I'm saying? So love the colors in this. I did the, uh, indigo in the background I did some indigo and green for the colors and the grass and it's just I don't know I, I think this could have turned out a little better but I liked it I wasn't I wasn't unhappy with it entirely but I feel like I could have done a little better with it but also I was trying to keep all these under like an hour and a half to two hours because I had to record them all and edit them all because you know I waited the last second so I was very pressed for time pretty much the whole time <laughs> Uh, number two was Bone. I thought Bone was cool. I just thought of some like Barbarian with those cool leather bracers. See what I mean there? Like holding a bone, just beating the shit out of someone with it. So yeah, it's Bone. Day three was Shadow. I love Shadow. It's one of my favorite ones. This is obviously the Shadow, the comic book character. Thought he turned out really cool. I really liked his, uh, his design. I love the colors together. That Indigo, man, I fell in love with it so much uh, throughout all these. And it was really, really cool. Pustules, of course, it's a zombie barfing up some purple stuff with some pustules all over him. That's all I could really think of. I was just, as soon as I thought pustules, I thought zombie. I did a lot of zombies for this one, but you know, it's Doomtober, baby. All right, now this one I don't think a lot of people got, and it looks like a big pile of dookie if you don't get it. Uh, this is a demon from the original Doom game. It's awesome. I drew it just based on the uh, the, the 16-bit character sprite. I love Doom. I love the old demon. I think it was super cool. If you thought it was bad, well, shut up. You don't know. Day six was gnarled. Gnarled was super cool. I, I enjoyed this. And when I thought gnarled, I always think tree, but I didn't want to do just a basic gnarled tree like I was going to do. I kind of like to always go outside the box a little bit. So I did a tree, a gnarled tree, but it's a tree end or a Trent or a tree beard, whatever. I like the idea of having the vines for like the beard and like the leaves for the hair and having like little twigs and stuff. But I thought he turned out pretty cool. I like him a lot. I, I like to do the zoomed in thing on things that are big, like the, the, the close up shot, because it's hard to get any of the details if I draw them really big in this small of a page. So I like the zoomed in shot to kind of show that they're bigger. So for eyeballs, I did a beholder from Dungeons and Dragons. Of course, you know your boy, big D&D &D nerd. Uh, I thought he turned out really good. I dug him quite a bit. I love the colors. I actually tried to do more like gradient blending up, and I thought it looked pretty good. Like it blended from like a dark, dark red to a light yellow, and I thought it worked really well. The transition worked out pretty good, and always that purple background just makes those warm colors pop so well. Love it. This, of course, is David from The Lost Boys. I don't think it turned out great. I think it definitely could have turned out better, but I don't hate it. Like it could be way worse, but I, I think it's okay. Um, I feel like I could have spent more time on it because I think I only spent like an hour or so on this one. Um, if I had spent more time, I think it turned out better. But I don't hate it. So yeah, David from The Lost Boys, come on, thanks. It's going to be Vampire. Oh, and I couldn't do one of these without having Freddy in there. Although I've been watching a lot of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies over the last month for my, you know, my Halloween movies for the year. Boy, most of them suck real bad. Uh, the only thing that keeps them alive are the awesome practical effects. So... I love Freddy as a, as a villain. The first one's amazing. First movie is amazing. Part three is okay. Part five is decent. Uh, part two is trash. Part four I don't remember well enough. I haven't watched that one this year. Uh, but anyways, I like Freddy. I thought he turned out really good. I actually used a reference picture of uh, a toy to draw this one. So I was pretty happy with how it turned out. 
And this was Axe, and I really like the Axe one too because it's a, it's a little if you know you know thing. That's kind of pretty much everything I do is it's very weird esoteric knowledge from the friggin 90s that no one hardly gets. But if you get this, you're cool with me. I like that. This is uh, Gilius Thunderhead from uh, the game Golden Axe. He's one of those dwarven characters uh, you could use. And I always loved him. He comes in like you can ride on a raptor and shit with him. He's really cool. Like he was always a super cool character. I've always been like, I've always loved dwarves. Like the big beard, short stature, and they're just tough and badass. So he's always been my favorite. And they kind of look like Vikings. So I don't know. It's weird. I've always had this love for Vikings. I don't know what it is. Next one is Were Creature. And I didn't want to do a werewolf because I knew that, like, there were going to be some really good ones done. Like, you know, Troy. <laughs> Troy did a really good one. So I didn't want to do that because I knew his was going to rock. So I wanted to do something a little different. Originally, what I wanted to do was um, the Curse of the Were Rabbit, uh, the Wallace and Gromit movie. So I was like, let's do that. Then I was like, eh, it's a little cartoony. Let's make it more evil or mean looking for uh, October. So I did a Were Rabbit, but it's much more hideous. <laughs> Big sharp teeth, blood everywhere. Love the yellow background. I just love yellow and red together too, so I thought that looked really good. But I liked him a little bit more than I thought it would. All right, this one probably lost me some subscribers, but you know what? It's all art, and that's all I care about. So for Undeath, I did the most famous of zombies, which is Jesus. I thought it looked really cool. The skin tones, I love the skin tones. I actually did a little different. I went uh, yellow and did red for my flesh tones, and then I put an entire layer of green over it to give it like a sickly look. And then I uh, did my purple for the uh, the shadows. I think this is the best skin tone I did the entire Doom Cover. So I really like this. This piece in general just turned out awesome. And on for the background, I was trying to do like a uh, like almost like a sickly stained glass. So instead of doing the straight angular lines, I did like wavy, sick looking lines. So I thought it turned out pretty cool, and I think the green helped it pop some. I don't know. I liked it a lot, though. I thought the piece turned out really good. Not trying to offend anybody, but if you got offended, don't be offended by art. Ah, yeah. Next one is Ritual. Now, this, uh, the reference I used for this was one of those old uh, Russian Orthodox monks. If you have never seen them, look those guys up. They are the coolest looking human beings ever. They're in these black and white robes with like a hood and... They got all these weird like arcane symbols on them and I just imagine them performing a ritual because they do rituals so I thought that was super cool a good reference for the, the ritual one I thought and for stalker obviously I drew the most famous of stalkers the predator I mean he's literally called the predator and what does a predator do it stalks its prey so yeah obviously I had to draw a predator here it turned out a little bit a cartoonier than I'd hoped but I realized where I had such limited time with these cartoon year was better because it was a little quicker but I really enjoyed it though I thought he turned out really good I like his skin tones here with the, the brown and the highlights I thought did pretty good but uh but yeah I mean I can definitely tell I've improved a little bit as I started this and it's super fun you know I couldn't do a Doomtober without doing Cthulhu my buddy my pal my dark lord and master uh, so for wings I decided to do Cthulhu um, it's a pretty basic, simple Cthulhu. Uh, I like the straight on pose with the wings kind of curling around. I need to do more dynamic poses. I feel that a lot of mine are real simple. Um, but I, I, what I normally do, instead of worrying about the pose of the character, I worry about the composition of the page. So I think his wings coming up and curling around here, leaving this as the open space, I thought that looked good. So I decided to do that. And I did that a lot of the time. So. But I liked him. I thought he turned out pretty cool. And of course, Cthulhu Radio Fatak. And also, I could have done Cthulhu for Eldritch. But I really wanted to draw the Black Pharaoh himself, Nyarlathotep. Uh, I love Nyarlathotep as a, as a Lovecraftian god, too. He's really super cool. He's actually one of the very few Lovecraftian gods that kind of walk amongst the people and, like, cause chaos. He's awesome. He's a great he's a great character in the in the Cthulhu mythos. Um, but yeah, if you've never read any Lovecraft, he's got some great, great creepy stories. And today would be your last day to really read it for the season. You know what I mean? Or just read it anytime. It's also really good during the wintertime. Wintertime's a good time for horror because everything's dead. But yeah, there's not a lotho tip. All right, next one is Void. Now, a lot of people didn't get this one because it's not a super huge movie, but I really, really loved it. It's genuinely one of my favorite horror movies in the last probably 20 years. Uh, it's a movie called The Void, and in The Void, there are these cultists that surround this hospital. Uh, and I ain't gonna say any more. This cop goes to the hospital because he finds someone out on the road, he takes him to the hospital. Uh, when he gets there, he can't leave because he gets barred in by these crazy cultists that look like this. They are the coolest looking cultists ever, and that movie is a banger. It's a 10 out of 10. Love it. There's a couple like nonsensical parts, so I ain't gonna say it's 10 out of 10. It's a hard, solid 9 out of 10, though. I love that movie. Once again, another prompt I could have done Cthulhu for, but I didn't. I did tentacles, and I didn't want to always go with like a Lovecraftian thing, because I always do that when it comes to tentacles. So I decided to go a roper. They have the most ridiculous tentacles in D&D, because they have a 50-foot reach. That is absurd. 
and I learned that the hard way several times. <laughs> I love the way this turned out. I was trying something new with the background, doing like the layers and the different uh, tonalities. Uh, I thought it turned out really good though. I was really happy with this. I'm one of my favorite ones actually. Next one was Mutant, and of course, I had to do the most famous mutant ever, which is a Ninja Turtle. Now, if you notice, it's a very nondescript Ninja Turtle. He's got a red mask, which originally, they all had red masks on the video game. You know, in the comic book, they didn't have any mask color because they, you know, they were black and white. But, original ones with color had red masks, so you don't know which one this is. He also has his bow, he also has his psi, his nunchucks, and his sword back here. So he's got a one of the, all the weapons. You don't know who he is. You know he's battle worn though. He's got a cracked shell. He's sweating. He's been kicking some foot soldier ass. So yeah, foot soldier, foot clan. Sorry, I'm stupid. But then if you notice in the background here, I did something kind of cool. I did the blue, purple, red, and orange. And if you notice the colors and what uh, the order of the colors, it's very important. Because Leonardo leads, Donatello does machines. Raphael is cool but crude. Michelangelo is a party dude. See, I'm, I'm pretty cool, guys. Listen. I know you, you see me sometimes, you're like, I don't think this guy's very cool. Trust me. Just trust me when I say I'm pretty cool. I know these things. Next up is the greatest wizard ever. It's Gandalf the Grey, Old Storm Crow himself. I absolutely love this one. Um, and what sucks about this one, though, is I recorded the whole damn video. And Actually, okay, so I didn't record the whole video. I, hit, uh, I thought I hit record, and I didn't. So I got most of the inking done. And I looked over and I was like, shit, it's not recording. So I hit record on it and got the rest of the inking and then I got all the painting recorded. But then, after that, I went to load it into my program and the program just shut down. Every time it locked the program up. So I was like, you know what, I'll shut my computer down and try it tomorrow. Came back the next day, video was gone. I had no idea what happened, it just disappeared like magic. Like magic from a wizard, it disappeared. Yeah, but I really liked him a lot. I thought he turned out really good. I love McGandalf. This one's probably like my least favorite, to be honest. Um, I love the concept. I just wasn't great on the execution. I thought it could have been better. But this one was for Apocalypse, obviously. And for Apocalypse, a lot of people were thought like, well, I thought I was going to draw the villain Apocalypse. I'll tell you why I didn't. I don't love his design. I like Galactus way more, and he obviously brings the Apocalypse. But I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of Apocalypse's design. Like, I, I looked up a bunch of reference pictures, and I was just like, eh, it was, it was boring to me. You can't beat that Galactus, that Jack Kirby excellence right there. I just think it looks so good. I love it. Threw the Silver Surfer on there because he's one of my all-time favorites. Thought it was a cool little piece, though, overall. Next one was Rat. Now, if you don't know who this Rat is, in my personal opinion, he's my most favoriteest Rat. He is... Brown Jenkins. There's a story called Dreams in the Witch House. There's a an old witch called Kaziah Mason who tra like travels through dimensions and, and time and stuff like that. And she has a little uh, familiar called Brown Jenkins, and it's this little rat with a human's face, and it's pretty terrifying. It's my favorite Lovecraft story. Check that out. If you're gonna read any story, you're gonna read any Lovecraft story at all. I would suggest that one because it's my favorite. Next up we have Witch Doctor. So when I thought Witch Doctor, the first thing I thought of was, well, first thing I thought of was BillyWitchDoctor.com from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. But I didn't want to do that. So I decided to do a troll from World of Warcraft. Because it looks very, they had a lot of Witch Doctor, they didn't actually have a Witch Doctor class, but they were very Witch Doctor-y. They're very like, oh, the voodoo man. You know, so they looked very Witch Doctor-y to me. So uh, I thought he turned out pretty good. I was surprised. I knew I wanted to make him very colorful, very bright, very World of Warcraft-y. And there's that indigo again. Mmm. And I really like how the ghost turned out too. I just basically splotched water on a little bit and then let it soak for just a second and then dabbed it off just to give a different tonality, only slightly though. But indigo in that orange, oh, chef's kiss, love it. And I was afraid to do this one, but boy, I really, really, really loved it. This is a spell, obviously. And I did just totally monochromatic. I did black, white, purple. That's all I used. So I guess it wasn't completely monochromatic. I guess so. Yeah, black and white don't really count as colors. So I did nothing but purple on all the highlights, all the shading, because when I think magic, I think purple. That's the color I think. Purple or like a like a sapphire blue, that's kind of what I think when I think of magic. So I wanted to have her just casting a spell, but the only light being uh, light source in the picture was coming from her hand. So I thought that was kind of cool. And notice, I thought it was kind of cool how her hand was completely white too, because that's where the spell was coming from. Next up is the power, because I have it. This was my, probably my favorite piece. I love the way this turned out. But Castle Grayskull for Masters in the Universe, of course, when I thought Castle, that's what I think of. So I thought Castle Grayskull was, was where it was at. But uh, I love the way the sky turned out, a little bleed there, but I mean, whatever, it works for a sky. 
Uh, the pink and the purple looks great together. I used some reference photos from the actual Castle Grayskull from the original Masters of the Universe cartoon. I really think that background artists for cartoons were really, really undervalued. It's unbelievable some of the backgrounds you'll see in cartoons that you just never really paid attention to. They just kind of pass by. But this is amazing, this background is. And uh, I, had to I had to paint it whenever I, I remembered it, so I liked it. Headless changed several times. I didn't know what to do for it. I was going to do um, Sleepy Hollow, but I was like, man, that's going to be one that everyone does. And I know I know my boy Troy's going to do it, and it's going to rock, and he did. It, it, his rule, he did a Legend of Sleepy Hollow one, and it was killer to the Headless Horseman. So I was like, ah, let's do something different. So I just drew a, a headless guy who just got his head chopped off. So, yeah, and I, this is all goofed up, though. I screwed his arm up real bad, and uh, I mean, whatever. I don't like this one either, but uh, I got a few in here I do like, so that's fine. Oh, man, the next one was Slasher, and my most favorite Slasher, recent Slasher, I should say, he's in the running for my all-time favorite Slasher, is Art the Clown from Terrifier. Oh, this movie's so good. The first one's so good, and it was made with a budget of $35,000. That is it, and it is a banger. Watch this movie. The second one just came out. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I've heard like people are like throwing up and passing out in the theaters. That's kind of an old trick they always say about scary movies. But apparently it's supposed to be pretty good too. Uh, but yeah, Art the Clown, love him. This one, of course, is Creep. So I just drew what I thought was like the creepiest looking guy that I could think of, which was like a guy with like shaded square frames and like a, a comb over and red hair. And I don't know, blood on his mouth because he was eating people. He looks like a serial killer. He has a very Dahmer-esque look. Um, it wasn't. It was a very nondescript, nonspecific uh, serial killer. So he's supposed to be a very generic serial killer, but I think it relayed the point of being a creep. Because if there's anything that's creepy, it's serial killers. Also, the orange and the indigo. Oh, love it. All right, next is Alter. And if you cannot tell, I love me some horror movies. This is from Hellraiser 3: Hell on Earth. So there's a scene in it where they go into this church, and well, I'll say Pinhead because that's how everyone knows him. But his name is Hell Priest. He's standing at an altar in front of this big stained glass window and he holds his arms out and he says, I am the way, and then the window explodes and it's badass. He takes two of the nails out of his head and puts them through his hand and then he like stretches his arms out in this pose right here. He T-poses and says, I am the way, and then that cross window explodes. It's awesome. It's a great, great scene from that movie. Next up, I have Colt. And listen, if this lost me a subscriber, well... Good. I don't want you here anyways. If I listen, I, I, I'm okay with political views. You can have whatever view you want to. That's totally fine. But when you are uh, suffering from cognitive dissonance and you are denying reality, then you are part of a cult. So the biggest cult members I could remember in recent history are QAnon people, are MAGA people. So like they're absolutely crazy. They absolutely denying reality. I've heard some. Listen, I live in a haven for this stuff. So you'd be amazed at some of the shit I've heard from these idiots. So yeah. And the, the the flag in the background is like a Don't Tread on Me spoof flag, but it's like, I like to drink pee. Which is funny, because I don't hate the Don't Tread on Me flag in its historical context. But everything's been repurposed by these idiots for something stupid. He's wearing a Q shirt. He's a zombie. Kind of, you know, he's pretty zombie-esque. Or he could be a meth head from Kentucky, so who knows. Either one, it looks pretty close. Wearing his MAGA hat. And wearing his American flag around his neck, which the flag code specifically says you shouldn't be doing. But they don't know that. Last but not least, it is Doom. And I knew that I was going to do some sort of Doomsayer piece for this because I was really excited for it. Because I specifically put Doom as the last one to be kind of, you know, thematic and fitting. If you notice, it's all my favorite color combinations. It's purple, and it's green, and it's yellow. I even got my blue pencil in there. It's the Doomsayer hovering over Frigg the Doomsayer, who's like the mascot, you know? So it's Frigg and the Doomsayer. I thought that was pretty fitting to close it out with. It was the first year we'd done Doomtober. I loved it. I thought it turned out really good. I'm so happy that everyone participated in it. You guys rocked it. You did so good, and I really appreciate all the support. And all the participation, man. You guys put a lot of time and effort to doing a Doomtober. And it was really cool of you. So, but that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the, the little bit of context on each piece. But uh, once again, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them below and I'll answer them about, you know, my process. Whatever you want to know. But uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I do really appreciate you. And keep on drawing on. Later. Oh, and happy Halloween. Woo!